Yo, we live. Um, I'm just noticing the shirt makes it look like I have no neck. So today we're going to talk about attachment. How ironic that it looks like my head is attached to my fucking chest with no neck in between. I think that's why these shirts don't cost that much. There's just something, it's a tank top, okay? But it's more like a turtleneck because look, I mean, well, there we go. <coughs> I gotta do like one of these things just to show you like I gotta, this just might mean I have that giganticism. Like those people that their heads, like my head is becoming so long that it creates the illusion that there's no neck. I guess in a sense, I have no neck. But I really don't want to go... I, I go on a lot of rants and tangents. And so, what I have to say to you guys is actually really valuable and important. I don't want to lose my integrity with this crazy talk. First of all, my glasses need to be cleaned. I think there's there could possibly be dust and fog in here. But then also, those are some fucking dirty ass glasses. Let me put this down for a minute and clean my glasses. Well, they're actually not that dirty. Maybe they just are thick. Thick lenses. That's not really how, maybe it's just a glare. Yeah. There. Except I don't like that angle. We go like this, I'm back to having no neck. Uh, I really want to get into the story with y'all. I do not like the way I look right now. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know, I guess it's the glare. What if we go like this? No. Now I just feel like I have no neck and my belly is like in my face when I lean back like that. Does anyone want to tune in and, like, get a valuable, like, lesson for today regarding attachment? Because attachment is, like, where our frustration and upset and disappointment come. So, I want to basically tell you, like, not to say you shouldn't have goals, but also on, like, a thin line in between, like... In a sense, you have to detach from them, too, because life doesn't always go as planned. I'm really having a problem with, like, this just doesn't... I would look better with no shirt on. I don't think I'm going to do that. You guys like the shirtless tank lip blogs anyway, right? Hang on one second. Oh, yeah. Now you see the little V on the top. That, that looks actually... Well, might as well show you the sexy body that was hidden from the shirt. We are in an effort. I mean, things are coming together, right? So, you know, speaking of... Look at that. Getting a little ripped. Tank Lip is back in business. I tell you what. The most important thing is being comfortable in your real clothes, like your skin. So maybe I should be be thankful that I actually look better in my real clothes rather than that other material shit. Maybe it didn't look right because it ain't as natural as like this type of definition. Look, I, no one's with me, so... I am kind of enjoying touching myself. Okay, let's not get too inappropriate. <laughs> I still, in a sense, have no neck, but it looks a little better there. Where's Dutola today? I want to speak to you and start this online flirting thing. Dutola, the hurricane do what it do. I have big plans for me and you, baby. But I understand your hotness is like on another status level, so... I can't just be the sloppy tank that I've been and expect and have attachments that anything is going to come in that unless I come proper and like you see that right there. 
Yeah, I'm working on it. Like, you are my motivation. Okay, because if it's not you, maybe it'll be someone else just as beautiful. Like, so let's talk back to attachments. So, why do people get disappointed? Why do they get frustrated? Why do they get upset? Most of the time, it doesn't, just, unless your life and existence is just an utter state of misery, okay, that just desires company, and then you're just a parasite to everyone living a good life. I guess there are individuals that fall into that trap, or we could allocate that that's their predicament, okay, but more times than not, that frustration and upset and disappointment is due to attachments. When life doesn't go as planned, when we have these goals or plans and it doesn't quite go our way, the way we want it to, maybe the way we need it to, although that's a, a trick or, tricky slope. Uh, you know, when we start discussing wants versus needs, but let's stay on topic. I will try to make this tangent free, although the way my mind works is tangents that eventually make punchlines. So forgive, forgive the dynamics of the tank lip speech. So attachments, like they, this frustration, disappointment, upset often leads to anger, okay, sadness, isn't it all regarding attachment, like for, with our goals and our plans, and life doesn't go the way we want it, so what do you do then, I want to offer you help, I don't want to just talk about the problems, I want to solve them, on some like vanilla ice shit, like back to A1A, Beachfront Avenue, girls were hot wearing less than bikinis, rockmen, lovers, driving Lamborghinis, jealous, because they was out getting mine, but da -da -da, and vanilla with the nine, ha, <laughs> you know, okay, you know what I'm saying, so jealous, like, isn't that a response to attachment, when someone has what you want? Okay, and life didn't go according to your plans or your goals. Okay, that's even one step further. So now, instead of just being frustrated, upset, disappointed, because you don't have what you want, jealousy derives from other people having what you want. Isn't that really jealousy in a nutshell? Okay, so attachments is really the prompt here. So how do you sidestep that? To then sidestep the, the disappointment, the frustration, the anger, the sadness. You have to relinquish a need for the things that you want. When you prioritize something as a need rather than just a want, you are going to feel empty. Okay, it makes sense that in that train of thought, which we discussed yesterday, thinking is a catch-22 where it could be your bridge to freedom or it could be your trap door, you know, sidestepping attachments deals largely with thought and once again goes back to Viktor Frankl that the last of the great human freedoms is to choose one's own attitude at any given time or moment, you know, Regardless of the circumstance, you could be in a hospital dying on your deathbed. You could be in jail or prison, literally, like behind bars. Or you could be in a jail or prison spiritually, even as you're physically like free. And like all these other tangents regarding that. But, you know, thought could be your like bridge to freedom. We're otherwise imprisoned and enslaved. So, but that's a fine line too. So attachments. We're talking today, y'all. The main prompt when I title this vlog, okay, it's going to say attachments. That is like our main topic. Kyle Rosenberg Raw, I appreciate you joining. I know about you, buddy. Props to you and your career. I like what you're doing. I think you have a lot of talent. And from Tank Lip, yours truly, I want to say I love you. Kyle.
okay? I have this funny feeling you have your qualms about Tank Lip because we haven't really spoken, but thank you for joining. And if you have any reservations about me, I just want to let you know. I won't place attachments to needing you to like me, but I want to send the love out with unconditional positive regard to you. Okay, so thank you. Just you joining gives me a great impromptu to make this point. Now, a lot of people have attachments to being liked and not everyone is going to like you. Okay, going and walking through this world, okay, is can be a situation where and most likely is where you can't please everybody. Okay, so the attachments and need some there are some that need to be liked by everyone. Those are going to be very sad people because not everyone is going to rock with your plan, rock with your thoughts, rock with your philosophies, like your style, like who you are. You can't please everyone. So maybe the first example, like not necessarily a personal example, because I feel like at this point I've evolved where in younger years I was more immature and had that selfish, immature need where I wanted to please everyone and like everyone, and that was a labyrinth, a maze, because you're going to bump the fuck into people like on some major bumper car shit where you're going to be a very sad individual because that's the nature of society is it doesn't even matter how nice you are. You're going to have the haters that fucking hate you just because you're a nice guy and they're so angry. So there are so many variables um, and weather in this storm of what is our life and society. So just one example to attachments. If you have the goals or plans that everyone's going to like you, learn now. I'm trying to help you sidestep or face that. Don't even sidestep it. How do, you, how do you tackle your fears as you face them head on? So, like, let go. Number one. All right, pretend we're doing like a PowerPoint bulletin here. Number one, let go of that need. Number two, accept. Acceptance is very important in the issue of attachments. Because as we're discussing... Okay, attachments, okay, when we have them placed upon our plans and plans don't go our way, we get disappointed, frustrated, upset, causes sadness, causes depression, and then we're miserable if we don't work through that. So, number two, acceptance of what is, acceptance of of what we can't change, the knowledge to know what we can, the power to know the difference, okay, just rearranging like on some, some serenity prayer type shit, like how do you find your serenity versus the disappointment, the frustration, the anger, the upset? How, how do you arrive at that tranquil peace, that peacefulness, that peace of mind, that serenity? You can't arguably really have that, okay, if you're in those states of frustration and anger. Those, go, those states of mind, those attitudes go against tranquility and peace and serenity. So how do you want, like, do you want to choose the misery or do you want to find the peace? So let go of those attachments. Accept that if you did have those attachments and life didn't go your way, accept what is. Okay, heart energy. Get in your heart. Heart acceptance. Fill yourself with love unconditional positive regard to everything and anything so that if things don't go as planned you can then face that with acceptance that things didn't go your way and you move forward 
and, until things go the way you want and know that more times than not, life, the process and our major learning that we're probably all meant to go through is that we have those plans and those are good. Okay, the real soldier is tested by how he deals with it when things don't go our way. It's real easy to look strong and be a soldier when everything is going your way. But the true test of every one of you soldiers out there, and you're all soldiers, spiritual soldiers, physical realm soldiers, we are all soldiers. We're in this together. The true test is how do you deal with those moments when life doesn't go your way as planned, when you're in that adversity, when you're in those predicaments. So number one, let go of those needs. Let go of those attachments. If you fell into the trap where you had them, accept that when you attach a need to something and it doesn't go your way, you can accept, okay, with acceptance that it is what it is and it just didn't go your way. So number three, you can move on to the next thing. Or maybe keep striving for the goal. But see, it's hard to reach our goals when the attitude shifts. Okay, so you had those plans. Then you got frustrated and disappointed when it didn't work out. That led to anger. Can you really do anything super productive when you're angry? Anger is a good force, like if you use it like to the right way, like get angry about what's not going right so then you can make that change for the positive so that things do go the way you want it to. But anger turn like inward, like that's on some evil shit. There's nothing productive about it when you get angry and you then just throw your hands up. See, the whole point is towards movement and keeping it moving, moving forward so that you then do reach the plans and that destination. Okay, just getting angry will then just defeat you, drain your energy, and ultimately you throw your hands up. So then you have the attachment to whatever you're attached to, those plans. You got disappointed and upset. Then you got angry. And then your anger defeated you even more. So you were defeated when you didn't reach your attachments. Okay? And then it's like you no longer even have any attachments or goals. You're just angry and throwing your hands up. But if you accept that things don't always go your way. Okay? You stay in your heart with that positive love energy. That heart energy. That goodness Okay, you will stay energized and eventually, okay, instead of things being a labyrinth or a maze, okay, you're on a successful journey where, okay, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Maybe one day you didn't get it, but there's other days where you just might, but ain't getting angry over your situations and throwing your hands up. That's tipping the canoe when you start flailing your arms. Okay, if you're in a canoe with another person, and one person is flailing their arms and the other person is trying to keep the boat steady, guess what? The one person flailing is going to be enough to tip that canoe, okay? Because they're sinking it to once. They're standing up, flailing their arms, and guess what? You both sink. But teamwork, okay, with both people trying to keep the canoe afloat instead of sinking or drowning, has got a better chance of that t canoe's not going to tip. You're going to sail off and, and meet some great journeys and destinations in the canoe. So same thing. Like equate that to getting angry and throwing your hands up is flailing the arms. Okay, you're just going to sink and drown before you reach your stuff. So attachments are good. Okay, but they're also the reasons why... If you esteem too much power into the attachment rather than your power to move forward regardless of what life throws at you. See, life's not always going to throw things your way. Things more times than not don't go our way. Okay, if you give up the second things don't go your way, you're in for a rough ride. And I could list many examples, okay, where things don't go my way. I'm going to get real personal here. And I hope that if 
a particular set of friends that's a couple sees this. This is not Tank Lip bitching again or being a Debbie Downer on what is their wonderful parade. But this is real. This is a great example of everything I'm talking about. Now, I've been sad for many years now regarding a situation. I didn't let me, okay, let, let myself like just give up on life. But this is pretty tragic for me because the predicament is one where I don't really see a way out of the predicament. The way out of this particular predicament would be go find like a new wifey. Like, and I don't see that happening anywhere in the near future ever because the woman that I am with, I truly adore her and love her and she's my everything, okay? But she just so happens to not be able to have kids. And now I've got a lot of groups of friends that are having their first kids, second kids, third kids. So this one particular couple, I had actually made a comment about a year ago that made me look pretty bad because I was bitching about some shit on like something really random, okay? But in the process of private messages, I somehow happened to mention like, why are you not having compassion and sympathy for things I'm going through? Your life is peachy. You just had your second kid and I can't even have any. And all they heard was that, or one of the people in the couple heard that, and it was like, oh shit, Tank's a Debbie Downer, like, you know, we're not going to surround ourselves with him because that's just trouble. And this is not to rehash anything. We're all good now. But just to give a great example of attachments, so this has been with me, like, riding on my soul, riding on my heart, because I dreamed as a little kid to one day get married and raise my, have kids, raise my own family with a wonderful wife and have beautiful children. And sure, there's the option to adopt. But for all practical purposes, I can't have like my own, like from my blood, like from, from, from my seed. Okay. Because my girlfriend, due to her circumstances, which I won't get into, can't have kids. Now, this came up when this couple had their second kid. Well, you know, people are on Facebook. People come up in your news feed. And I just happened to see, well, they're having their third kid. Well, if my attachments to not having kids, you know, derived me at a, like a a sad like tragedy or made me depressed because I had this attachment through life of like what were my goals and life didn't go my way or as planned and it caused me sadness. Now I've since evolved and worked through it but things often like the test to you is it they get rethrown back in your face and it's almost like salt in the wound but Another person's happiness should not become your jealousy. Like, that would not be healthy for me. So I'm trying to be in a real good place. And this is a mark of my maturity and evolution where this same predicament when maybe they had their second kid and I made that kind of angry gut from the gut. Rather than being the heart and accepting, I made a statement from my gut, which is usually not a good sign. And it's not a mark of, like, the ultimate wellness or healthiness in a person. Okay, I made like jealous type remarks, uh, poor me, you know, oh, woe is me type stuff in, in response to like someone else's like peachy cloud of like, and, and it was also related to jealousy because they ha were having what I wanted, what I was sad about. So not only did I have attachments and it made me sad just innately, like on my own. And then when you see other people having what you want, getting and experiencing everything you want that you know you can't have, it is a real test of your spirituality. So you, so how, like, how do you rise above it? And then when the answer is like, find a woman that can have kids, and then the cash 22 is that, is you lose someone that is your everything, even when she can't provide you with kids. She's still your everything. So... Just recently as today,
And that's not, I was going to do a blog about attachment anyway, regardless of this. But the fact that I saw is just a great impromptu chance for me to make another example. So it was an issue for me when they were having this second kid. I'm like, how are you bitching at me for shit about the way I am? Do you realize what I'm going through? Like, I can't have kids. You're having your second kid. And that was an issue for me two years ago. Like, if I was immature and not evolved, the way I would be responding right now regarding these attachment issues and everything that happens when you have attachments and jealousy and stuff, I would be bent out of shape. And it would be experiences like salt in a wound. Because now I'm looking on their Facebook just because it happened to show up in my feed, not because I was lurking, in case you guys yourselves are actually the ones tuning into this blog. They are now having a third kid. Like, God is blessed. They are good people. I am ha genuinely happy for them. That's, I'm not wish that they're not experiencing this. But there is a big part of me that wishes, like I have these attachments where I wish it was my blessing because it's something I wanted my whole life. They're having their third kid. It bent me out of shape. I suppose I could argue that it did, even though I've worked through that. When they were having their second kid and they were bitching about me, about on me, on some of my personality shit. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. back the fuck up here a second. Like, know your role. Be happy that you're not going through the fact of what I'm going through. Like, I can't even have kids. I got all these other issues. All I ever wanted was kids, and you guys must be happier than pigs and shit because you're having a second kid. I can't even have one. Those same people are now having their third kid. Okay, how blessed are they? Family is where it's at. Like, I know where life is at and what, like, should people really value. At least my foundation... And beliefs regarding that is friends and family is where it's at. And family, even the utmost, even more than friends. Because friends do sometimes come and go. And for the most part, family is with you. Okay, blood is thicker than water type shit. So, like, I have that attachment to family. And here are, and, and I see the writing on the wall for, like, Whatever I'm experiencing now, it may only get worse. Okay, I may be that guy that's 50 years old and like my immediate family has died out because they get older and die and I have no kids of my own. So what is Thanksgiving? I'm like the third wheel on people's family dinners, like unless I want to just be alone and not face it, you know, so I see like the future and it looks grim some of that okay and knowing now that that's what the future could look like it's making me angry in in the present but i have to continue to work through it and it comes down to attachments if i'm getting provoked and frustrated and upset and disappointed then it means i haven't quite learned the lesson of attachments okay and if those attachments or goals or plans were good, not saying you shouldn't have attachments because then if you don't have goals in life, like what is the purpose? How can you have purpose without goals? So that's not what I'm saying. But at the same time, like remember, let it go, let go of your needs. And number two, like if you had them, if you fell into the trap where you had the goals and the needs and attachments, if it didn't go your way, it is what it is. You can either just stay miserable in that or number two you can accept be get into that acceptance get into your heart find that love even as things didn't go your way and accept what is except there are things that you can't change i can't somehow magically make it where my girlfriend has a uterus again after they took it out to make sure her cancer goes away. But guess what I can do? I can be thankful that they cured her cancer. And by doing whatever they did with her uterus. Brian Eggerson, thank you for joining. Whatever they did with her uterus. To ensure that the cancer doesn't come back. I'm going to be thankful about that. Because she is my everything. Okay. Rather than get Debbie Downs on 
the fact that she can't give me kids. So there's ways to get into your heart. There's ways to find that acceptance. And sometimes it's simple as finding what it is that you're thankful about. Like, what is it about your life that you are thankful for? When you focus on that, it goes back to what I was talking about yesterday, that the brain can't really do two things at the same time. We subconsciously maybe think we can multitask, but the truth is, if you are going to focus on something positive that you're thankful about, and you can arouse that reality that you're really feeling thankful about it, it's very hard to, at that same time, go back to feeling sad and woe is me for the things that you're not thankful for. So this is a good point where that extra fixation of focus, put it on something positive, something you're thankful about, because sometimes it is healthy to distract yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, Yes, that's a tragedy to me that I can't have kids. It is very sad. It's frustrating, disappointing. But I also can't change it unless I find a new girlfriend. Okay? And she really is special. She's my everything. And when I say my everything, the adoration and affection and love that I have for her, not only do I have it like on a romantic level, but the way that I desire to care for her and show her a good life She's my everything because it almost is also like having my own kid. Like she, when people call their girlfriend or their wife, like, you know, baby girl. <clears throat> like when I do that, like I'm not trying to be twisted on or some shit. Like I feel like the way my heart wants to nurture and protect her and take care of her. It's almost like how a mother or father would want to protect their kids. So she is like my everything. Like, in the circumstance and predicament I'm in, she's my everything. Because I have deemed myself her caretaker. The one that's going to look out for her the same way like a parent would for a kid. So she's my baby girl. She's also my romantic, okay, partner. You know, a sexual partner. She's, you know, someone I love in, like, so many different ways. She's my everything. So you know what? Like, things happen for a reason and you know you don't always know what that is but accept that if it's going that way it must be how it's meant to be because if it was meant to be some other way then it works its way out we just have to figure out how to not fall into the little side traps and attachments is one of those side traps it slows us down it derails us because if you put too much emphasis on the attachment rather than the thankful for what you do have, you're going to get stuck. I learned the hard way. Like, thank God. Thank you for everything world like that you have taught me. Because today I can deal with the salt in the wound of a buddy having his third kid when I can't have any. I can deal with that, even though it's even more salt than the second kid. I can deal with that way better today than I was dealing with it when it was they were having their second kid. So the point is, if I, on my ape shit, fucking primitiveness, could arrive at where I'm at today spiritually and mentally, and the strength I have, you, there's not a, one of you out there that can't find the same strength and maturity that I have. And reach that level of evolution. So give some thought today about attachments. And think about each time what I'm saying. Each time you're upset and angry and disappointed and frustrated. I'm going to bet you more than 99% of the time it has to do with some level of attachment that you placed on something. Okay? So... I love you all. Tank lip. For those of you that tuned in, thank you. Much love.